Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And the the title of today's episode is taken from a poem that I w- was sort of one of the first mystical poems that I ever came across, the Rubiat of Omar Khayyam, and in particular the translation by Edward Fitzgerald. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you a little excerpt from it, and then we're going to talk about it. We are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go, round with the sun-illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show. But helpless pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, hither and thither moves and checks and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but here and there as strikes the player goes. And he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all. He knows. He knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. And the reason that that little excerpt always stands out to me is because it speaks to a distinction that when people first come across it, it, it sounds almost like the opposite of empowerment. It, it, and in some ways it is. It, it, it sounds, when I first kind of read it, it, it felt a little bit hopeless. Like, oh, there's nothing I can do. Oh, you know, it's just, I'm just a helpless piece of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days. I'm, I'm just a, a ball that no question makes of eyes or nose, but here or there as strikes the player goes. You know, the moving finger having rights and having writ moves on, nor all my piety nor wit can lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all my tears wash out a word of it. So what's the point? And I remember reading an interview with the Indian mystic Ramesh S. Balsakar. And he was essentially saying the same thing in a, in a more blunt and less poetic way throughout the interview. And I remember the first page of this interview, it, 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 he just kept saying, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it's all predestined. And, and the interviewer's going, well, what about my reaction to it? Nope, that's predestined. Well, but what about... If I change my attitude, well, if you do, that was predestined. And, and, and I remember at first listening to the, reading it and, and hearing it in my head and just thinking, that's crazy. That, that's terrible. That's how, how bleak, what a, what a bleak philosophy. But I noticed that by about page three, I, I could feel my shoulders drop. I could feel myself relaxing. I could feel my body exhale. Because if there's nothing you can do, if everything you do is preordained, if if you're not the pilot, you're the plane. If you're not the pitcher, you're the ball. If you're not the one playing chess, you're one of the pieces. Then you're free to be and do exactly as you are and do. And it's one of those interesting paradoxical ideas that come up again and again in spiritual teachings, that something that at one level you could describe as being a victim, a helpless victim of life, actually the experience of that is complete freedom. Because if you are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go, if you are but a helpless piece of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, if you are the ball that no question makes of eyes and nose but here or there as strikes the player goes, if the moving finger writes and having writ moves on, and nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. You're off the hook. It's kind of the opposite of, I don't know if you remember the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeves, where 
I'm going to ruin it for you. So if you haven't watched it yet and you want to watch it, it was from the 70s. But Lois Lane dies, and, and it's kind of Superman's fault. And he's so distraught that he flies around the Earth super fast to reverse the rotation of the Earth to go back in time to rewrite life. And if you try to control life, if you try to change and fix the past, if you try to control the outcome, you need to be Superman. And the problem is, we're not. We're just man and woman and human. But it turns out that being human, guided by spirit, lived by spirit, not only takes away all the stress and pressure of thinking you're supposed to be in charge of something that you're just not in charge of, but it allows you the experience of ultimate freedom. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon.